Hi everybody, my name is Joe Reynolds and I'm President and Director of Save Coast Wildlife, which is a nonprofit located along the Jersey Shore. And what we do is we help to educate people about the biodiversity along the Jersey Shore. All the seals, the whales, the dolphins, the horseshoe crabs, and the fish and the seabirds. We help to educate people about all that wildlife that you can find along the Jersey Shore. And one of the biggest problems impacting coastal wildlife today is plastics. Plastics, unfortunately, can be found just about everywhere. They're in our clothes, they're in our containers for food, they're in our electronics, they're in our cars, they're everywhere. In fact, sometimes they're in the food itself. And we've been using plastics in abundance, at least since the 1950s, and now that plastic is breaking down into smaller and smaller bits and impacting the web chain, or the food chain, I should say, the, food, the web of life. And so now fish, who are thinking that that little tiny bits of plastic are plankton are ingesting that into their stomachs and sometimes we find dead fish along the Jersey Shore we find little bits of plastic inside their stomach and that fish that are alive that are ingesting plastics they might be eaten by seabirds like gulls and gannets and sometimes when we find dead birds along the Jersey Shore inside their gizzards or stomachs are tiny bits of plastics so we are starting a monitoring, pro a monitoring program with the folks from the Plastic Wave Project to see just how bad the plastic problem is along the Jersey Shore. We need your help. We want you to volunteer with Plastic Wave Project and Save Coastal Wildlife to help us monitor our beaches to see how much plastic is along the Jersey Shore. So stay tuned. we got a beautiful day here. We're located at Sandy Hook and we were going to educate you about how to monitor microplastics along the Jersey Shore. Thanks everybody. Let's get started on materials. All materials used for this experiment were repurposed items. We encourage you to get creative and reuse what you already own. For this project, you'll need one square meter, nine jars of any size, one sifter and one trowel, and a friend to lend a hand and record important data. Labeling your samples will be crucial to this research, so please remember to label clearly and accurately. Information to include are the following. Beach location, the date, your sample location, so whether the, this was your dune line, your high tide line, or your low tide line, you're going to want to illustrate that, as well as the sample number. So dune one, dune two, dune three, etc. And then lastly, your initials. Now that you have chosen your site, this may be a favorite beach of yours, it's time to get familiar with where you will be sampling. Please refer to this graph as a guideline. You will be sampling three different areas at your site. These areas include the low tide line, the high tide line, and lastly, the dune line. For each area, you should be collecting three different samples. Note, each square on this graph represents a collected sample. This means that you should have nine total samples collected when you're finished. As you can see, three different samples were collected along the dune line, three samples collected along the high tide line, and lastly, three samples were collected along the low tide line. To begin, drop your meter square in a randomly selected area along the low tide line. Within this square, pick one random spot. Using your trowel, take three scoops from the same spot and scoop into sifter. Begin to sift through sand like so. When you've sifted through most of the content, place what's left into your labeled jar. This may include any sand and rock that did not get sifted through. You will go through samples later on at home anyways. Moving into a new area within the square, repeat the previous steps. You'll be collecting a total of three times in three separate areas within your square emptying all content into the same jar, jar one.
you've now completed your first sample. Moving down to our next sample square along the low tide line, take roughly five to 10 large steps and place your square meter down at your next location. Continue the previous steps. Moving down the low tide line for the third and last time, continue the previous steps. Continue this process moving on to the high tide line, and then lastly, the dune line. Congratulations, you've completed your first sampling. Now it's time to sort through your samples. So, what do microplastics look like? The most common microplastics you will probably come across during your sampling are plastic fragments and nurdles. Plastic fragments are tiny pieces of plastic that have been broken down from larger plastic products. These pieces range from five millimeters or smaller. Next on the list are nurdles. Yikes, these guys come directly from the source. That's right, the plastic industry is responsible for these spills and how they end up on our shores. Did you know that these pellets are what make up all plastic products? These nurdles are melted down in the factory and are the building blocks for all plastic products. After watching this video, we're confident that you are ready to put your citizen science skills to the test. Let's tackle this plastic crisis together. Enjoy! Wow.